Hi, my name is Matthew Coyle, and today I'm going to be talking to you about eSports. So start off trying to define it, I suppose. So this is not the sexiest of definitions, but I kind of go with it. So um, Harari and Shoglum uh, define it as a form of sports where the primary aspects of the sports are facilitated by electronic systems, the input of players and teams, as well as the output of the eSports system are mediated by human computer interfaces. So, yeah, it's not very nice, but um, the core aspect of it is it takes nearly everything that you have in normal sports just with a different input system and a different mediator. So it's just, it takes the core fundamentals of sports and just translates them to a different medium. Uh, so what kind of games do people play? Um, there's real-time strategy, so things like StarCraft II, uh, multiplayer online battle arenas like League of Legends and Dota. Uh, First-person shooters, fighting games, online card games, nearly any game that there is that's multiplayer, people play it competitively. Any skill-based game, sir. Uh, so, what kind of scale are we talking about? We've got large prize pools. At the International 2015, it was an $18.4 million prize pool. Uh, we're talking about big numbers of viewership, 11.2 million concurrent viewers for the 2014 League of Legends Worlds Final and 40,000 people in the stadium in Seoul at that. And big money to be made for the individuals. So one of the Evil Geniuses players in Dota made $1.8 million in four years. So there's a fair amount of money to be made in it. Um, again, on the scale, this is a quote from the CEO of Twitch, Emmett Shear, saying, in 10 years, eSports will be bigger than athletic sports. I'm not kidding, more people play video games than sports already. Viewership will follow. Now this is a bold statement, but looking at the numbers and looking at the growth rate, it's not completely out of the question. So this is a picture I like that kind of demonstrates that growth. So it doesn't show up great, but season this is um, the League of Legends World's Finals, uh, the size of So season one was just you know in a little room in a LAN, and then season two and season three grew, and you have the Staples Center there, and then season four they filled out the World Cup arena in Seoul. So it's, it's getting very big, very fast. Um, so the reasons behind that growth, these were the top five um, draws to esports as identified by Hamari and Shulgum. Um, so first we have the drama of it. So the actual game itself, the, the events that unfold, uh, there can be big upsets, big turnarounds, just massive events. In different games, you'll have you know, big fights, and things can just get extremely dramatic very quickly. Um, and it, it really adds to the draw of it, because in sports, you, know, you generally know what's going to happen. Um, but in eSports, it's anyone's guess. There, there are so many different combinations of play styles and teams and uh, different ways of approaching the game that it can lead to really unexpected events. Uh, next would be the skills of the players. Um, so, people, everyone knows the best players in the different esports, for example, Faker and League of Legends. Everyone just admires him and sees him as one of the greatest players who ever played. And whenever he's playing a game, everyone will watch just to learn what he's doing. Everyone just watches him and tries to replicate whatever he's doing. So, the skills of the actual players really draws people in just so they can uh, aspire to be as good as the, the pros. Next would be the acquisition of knowledge. So this is the fact that the people who watch esports are also gamers themselves. So when you're watching it, you're trying to learn how to play. And you're trying to take whatever they're doing and Im implement it in your own game and try and become as good as them. Uh, next is aesthetics. Um, so just the general look of a game, just watching a game that's really colorful and visually impressive. So if you watch something like League Legends versus Dota debate, some people would go more towards League based on the aesthetics point of view, whereas people go towards Dota on the skills, so there can be um, different um, approaches there. And then the novelty as well is one massive draw to esports in that it's always changing. So in every game there are constant patch updates, new champions and uh, characters release, new weapons, new teams on the scene, new players, new organizations, new competitions. And since it's so young, it's just rapidly evolving. And all the games themselves evolve, as well as the events and the whole organization around it. 
so this is an inevitable comparison that's going to come up. Uh, esports versus conventional sports. Because the moment you call it esports, sports is in there, and anyone who likes sports but has this social stigma against games will just say it's not a sport, it's just a game, or something along those lines. Which is, um, it's not the best of arguments, but you, you can't really argue against people who are stuck in that mindset. Because gaming still has a social stigma around it, it's hard to push past that, and it's a matter of social acceptance, so people have to see games on the same level as sports. Um, so there are reasons they should do this, because there are a lot of similarities between the current way esports are being done and conventional sports. So uh, esports has the same amount of coverage, we've got massive viewership, uh, it has shoutcasters doing um, running commentary, it's got analyst desks, it's got all that kind of metagame analysis. Uh, it's got the same kind of big personalities um, as sports, such as Faker, it's other just big players that everyone knows and loves and adores. Uh, it's got the same kind of support staff, so you have now coaches and analysts and all kinds of managers and things um, working behind the team to try and push them to be the best. You've got fantasy leagues and betting, um, which is something that's always been in sports, but now it's, it's coming into this as well. So whether official or unofficial, like League of Legends has an official fantasy league and other ones have unofficials. Betting, uh, sometimes it's done semi-officially. Uh, it's usually kind of underground and sometimes it can be shady. Um, League of Legends is actually recognized as a professional sport in the US. Um, it's, it's just for visa purposes mainly, for players trying to get in so they can actually play, because uh, they have a lot of issues with that, but it is recognized, so it's always a nice fact to throw in people's faces when they say it's not a sport. In the US it actually is. Um, <laughs> one other similarity that's not great is the corruption. So we have in esports match throwing and player poaching and things like that. It happens. Uh, it's going to happen in any kind of organized sporting event, but you know it's, it's something that's not really a, completely avoidable. So some of the differences some of them that make esports better. Um, but, um, so in esports, uh, all the players, well, nearly all the players, stream themselves while they actually play the game. And while they're doing this, they also talk to the people watching them. Um, they, play, they play community games so they can play with their fans. Um, and there's this kind of connection with the players that you don't have at all in normal sports, where you can actually watch them train and you know how they get as good as they do. Um, so it's, it's nice to connect with them like that and bring them down to a more human level and it helps you feel involved in the community. Um, esports is a mainly, it mainly runs on online platforms, so there aren't many channels that actually show it. ESPN showed a couple games of Dota, I believe, and uh, BBC was streaming some league um, during the World Finals. There's um, on Game Net in Korea, because the Koreans are just mad about esports. Um, and there are a few channels that show it here and there, but very few dedicated ones, uh, so mostly it is just online um, or cross streaming. Um, one of the differences is cross game organizations. So, if you have a favorite organization in one game, such as Fnatic or SKT in Korea, um, they often play all the nearly all the esports that are out there. So, SKT, while owning you know the number one team in League of Legends, they also own some of the top StarCraft players and. They just have, you can follow one organization across multiple games, across the whole field of esports. So it's quite nice. If you're, if you're like an organization fanboy, you can just kind of uh, go across a lot of games. Um, also on that, it's quite interesting that a lot of teams are, whereas in conventional sports they're sponsored by you know, corporate sponsors, here sometimes they're owned by them as well. So for example, Samsung last year had two of like, the top um, Korea, um, League of Legends teams. Samsung White and Samsung Blue, and then SKT are just a telecoms company in Korea, and they own uh, a lot of the top players. So it's, it's quite different in who owns the teams and how they show that. Um, so it, as I was mentioning earlier, esports is always changing with the new patches, the new games, the new teams, and trying to keep up to date with that is it's challenging, and it can kind of throw people off when combined with the uh, complex rule set vocabulary, so it's hard to get people into it. Uh, so I guess in the end, the question is, does it qualify as a sport? I don't think it matters. I think it can be better than sports, and it can be its own thing. It doesn't need to be compared to it. Uh, so 
the problems it's having. Uh, so social recognition, as I mentioned earlier, trying to actually um, break the current gaming stigma, uh, being recognized officially as a sport for visa purposes, agreeing on a rule set. So there are problems with how to police uh, player misconduct, players uh, uh, with having bad manners or doing things outside the game even, or how if they stream, if they're allowed to stream other games, there are a lot of disputes about how things like this should be uh, policed. And then also the negative influence of money, so the, so the corruption, players moving to different regions just for money, uh, teams only going to events where there are money, it kind of negatively impacts the whole community aspect. So for example, this guy, some of you might recognize, um, who was in the news for raising the price of the of a cancer drug for, by 5,000%, he owns two esports teams. Uh, so. These are the kind of people who can get, who are getting involved in it now. People who have money and want to make more money, uh, who don't really care about the community. So that's one of the dangers. So in conclusion, esports is big. It has a lot of potential, but it doesn't have to live up to conventional sports. It shouldn't always be said that it's not a sport. And that doesn't matter. It's its own thing. It does not need the normal support. I mean, sport support network. It can be its own entity but we need to agree on how it should move forward. There's how events are run, what kind of wages we should play, uh, pay players, how we police them and all that, and how we move forward. We have to do it in a unified way because at the moment it's not really working. There's too much disagreement. And that's it. Thank you very much. Mm. So with a unified framework, what essentially you're saying is that it needs a governing body. Yeah, like how the main problem. Um, the main problem is that you have loads of different esports. They're all being put under the one branch, but they're all run very differently, like all sports are run differently. Um, so it's difficult to actually know how to run events and how to how to um, take care of players and make sure they're not being exploited. Make sure that people aren't just trying to make fast money and get out. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's it's too young and growing too quickly. Um, without any kind of, yeah, there is no governing body for it, and there's argument over whether there should be governing bodies over the, all of esports or just over particular games. Mm. Like League of Legends is, um, it's pol uh, policed by Riot Games. And they they just have loads of rules on the players and make sure that they don't do what they should, what Riot don't think they should do. Mm. Whereas other games don't have a f um, competitions that are organised by the actual developers, so. Um, so there's no one actually governing over the whole um, array of competitions and ways that people are being dealt with. Mm. So yeah, um, I'd some kind of unified governing body would probably help, but I don't think it would happen because there are so many different approaches. Mm. People who do fighting games have a different community to people who play MOBAs, to people who play first-person shooters. Mm. So that, that is the problem. Um, I, I don't know what the solution would be, but um, mm. <laughs> we need to find one because, uh, mm. I don't know, it's, it's growing too quickly without any kind of real framework of how it should be run. Is anyone being harmed? Is there a need for a governing body? Um, is I, th being? I think there is. There are a lot of problems um, when it comes to players trying to make the most money or trying to be treated well by their organizations, um, be treated fairly, um, not feel like they're just being used to you know, win wor one world final and then kick or anything like that. Um, I think, um, I, I don't know, like, <laughs> um, I think, I have to think about it, um, yes. <laughs> seems to be in, in, in conventional sports, you're always protecting yeah. the player, you yes. know, put him in cotton wool in the soccer, put them in the um, other things in rugby, but protect the player, no? Well, it's more here about um, making them feel kind of safe and, mm. so, and making them feel at home and um, mostly appreciated. Mm. Um, because there are a lot of players out there and there's always someone tr um, who's climbing up the ranks ready to take your place. So it's kind of difficult there because you, you know you're going to be kicked if there's someone who's a bit better than you just below you. Um, so there's a lot of pressure on the players to be the very best and they mm. put a lot of effort into that. They put so much effort into training and practice and everything, and then they could just be kicked at a moment's notice. Mm. So it's it's not a nice place for them to be, mm. where uh, mm. people are very happy just saying that yeah, you're not on the team anymore.
for the aspect of drug testing, but I'll let other people oh, ask there's, questions. There's that as well. I can get, <laughs> I can get time to get into that. Do you think people focus too much on esports being defined as a sport? You said there it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. I'm doing this topic as yeah. well and I don't think it matters at all. Mm -hmm. And I think people focus too much on it being a conventional sport in terms of it being televised. Mm -hmm. It's a dying medium. Why do we want it to be televised? And any time it is televised, you get people tweeting at the uh, broadcaster mm -hmm. saying, where's my football, where's my yeah, exactly. what is this, video mm -hmm. games are sports. But we, gamers themselves are too volatile to, to even put up with it being televised. Yeah. Because we, we don't care. We want it to be live streamed. That's fine for us because we don't really watch much TV. We're at our computers. But once we see these tweets, then people react. And that's putting another bad aspect on the gaming community because they, they start tweeting at these people who are saying this isn't a sport. And yeah. it's just, just unifies the whole. Well, yeah. uh, I'm completely of the mindset that it doesn't matter, what, it doesn't need to be compared to sports. The same as when we talk about is video, art, video games art, I don't care if they're art, I don't think they need to be compared to art, I think they are fantastic in their own right, they don't. Just because it's a growing medium, we try to fit it into the categories that already exist, and I don't think that's necessary. It's, 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 it's just not a great way of thinking about it, thinking about it in terms of other things. Like it can, it's its own entity. It's it's growing. It's great in its own way. We don't need to compare it to something else in order for it to, uh, us to understand what it is. Uh, in relation to in relation to the, the television um, kind of aspect of it, I think sports have a bit easier because when you're on television, people flick past it and then they just notice it's on and they'll watch it. And you get from that you get these massive viewing numbers. Whereas in esports, you have to go and find it and then watch it. Um, so, I think sports kind of has it easy in that regard, where you don't have to go looking for it, it's always somewhere you'll find it. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I much prefer the online medium, because particularly with esports, when you're watching a game, there are certain games which allow you just to watch it within the game in a spectator mode, which is much more engaging. Or when you're watching it, um, there are really nice um, clients on, online that you can watch it through, that let you see all the statistics live. So it, it really gets you in the game a lot more. So I, I think eSports is doing a much better job than a lot of the conventional sports are. Mm -hmm. Any final questions? Madam Mike. Uh, yeah, no, I was just wondering if you'd look into the fact that the sports are there's like a financial aspect on the people wanting to play actually interacting with the game. It's like if you want to get competitive at League of Legends, how much money to spend to get all the characters to play as to find out, to be able to play with and against and find out how to learn how to play. Yeah, m well, mostly you get that, like, in, in my experience, I've played um, a bit competitively in the Irish scene, uh, in League of Legends, but mostly you get the characters through play, like, because the amount of time you put in practice, you earn enough in-game currency to buy the characters, uh, so there isn't too much problem with that. Um, there can be problems if you want to enter bigger tournaments trying to put up the money for prize pools because th there's always an entrance fee. Typically in, in Ireland, like the, the prize pools are small, it's like 50 quid or something. But uh, as you go up, it, it can get expensive. If you want to break into the scene uh, in a big way, it can be hard. You have to put up the money up front. And if you're not good enough, you know, you're going to lose out. Yeah. So there is a financial aspect on, on there's that burden on the players. Proper round. Well done, that's